In 1923, at the age of 26, Salvatore Lucagna, his birth name, was making money in the drug trade. Consequently, he got caught up one day in a sting and sold two ounces of morphine and an ounce of heroin to an undercover. In order to get himself out of trouble, Lucagna gave up his supplier's stash house, located on 163 Mulberry Street. But the $150,000 worth of drugs that the cops seized really belonged to him and the charges were dropped for the information he provided. He was originally charged with the Harrison Act, a federal law that taxed and regulated the production, distribution, and importations of coca products. Allegedly, following this incident, Lucania was labeled in the street as an informant, and this was due to numerous drug dealers being arrested after his charges were dropped. It's also been reported that Arnold Rothstein was the person to step in and save his reputation. Most people will say, well, he only gave up his own stash. Let me put it in perspective. Guys in that life would look at that as cooperating, as the motto has always been, say nothing and deny everything. I've heard this line quite a few times. If he can give himself up, what do you think he'd do to us? What's more interesting took place six years later. In the early morning hours of October 17, 1929, police officer Henry Blank came across a very badly injured Lucania in Staten Island. Actually, Lucania mistakenly flagged the cop down. He was looking for a ride and was stumbling near the old Terra Marine Inn. He told the police he was abducted at gunpoint off of 50th Street and 6th Avenue in Manhattan by men he didn't know. He said his mouth was taped shut and hands were bound and that he was beaten and slashed till unconsciousness. The officer first drove him to a hospital. His eyes were swollen shut and he had lacerations to his arms, back, neck and throat. He additionally offered to police that he was taken for a ride, told to be assaulted or in most instances killed. Some accounts have him being strung up in a Staten Island warehouse and beaten, but there's no confirmation that this actually took place. He claimed he had no idea he was in Staten Island and told the police he thought they dumped him in New Jersey. Here's the strange thing. The police charged him with grand larceny of an automobile, caught theft. Another theory is that Lucania requested to be charged with something, charges that were later dropped. In 1960, Luciano, and by the way, he changed his name after the beating incident, was interviewed by Oscar Fraley, where he discussed the incident. He said that during the attack, he was questioned about the location of Jack Legg's Diamond. On July 14, 1929, Legg's Diamond and his associate shot three people in the Hotsi Totsi Club on 1721 Broadway in Manhattan, a speakeasy that he co-owned, so naturally he was wanted. Luciano also stated that his abductors weren't mobsters, and he believed them to be cops. A few quick things. Even in prison, if an inmate gets into a fight and has injuries, he's expected to tell the guards that he slipped and fell. Luciano gave way too much information regarding this incident, and the charging him with car theft made no sense at all. In addition, why give an interview and even discuss it? It just looks bad all around. And lastly, as most people know, in 1959, Vito Genovese was convicted in a narcotics conspiracy. It's always been the belief that Luciano and Lansky set Genovese up, revenge for his attempt on Frank Costello two years earlier. And we don't know this to be a fact, but if it is true, as a member, and more importantly a boss, you never set someone up to go to prison. It seems that Luciano had a different side to him, one where he would do anything to avoid prison. And proof of that being his assisting the United States government, the mob's enemy, by providing intelligence during World War II, which ultimately led to his being released from prison. I'll leave it to the viewers to come up with their own conclusions. But I'll end with this. They say if there's smoke, there's fire. When a mob boss or a former mob boss starts doing interviews, he's on fire.